Good morning, friends. Uh, I'm from Padatha uh, Engineering College. My name is Santosh. I'm going to handle a, a structural unit in embedded processor. We're going to discuss about this topic. Uh, this is from the uh, embedded system subject. So, so today's session we're going to discuss about this topic. So, why are we discussing this topic? Because for any real-time operating systems, uh, it required embedded processor. So, what's the difference between actual processor and embedded processor? The processor simply uh, using uh, inputs and execute the outputs, uh, simply processing what inputs are given, and the execution of instruction produce the output. But actually, it execute instruction uh, every second, going to execute a few instructions. But according to real time operating system, it does, that is not enough because everything to be computed in real time. So, for real time operating system, there must be faster computing action. So, in such case, we are using this embedded processor. So there, were, there are many examples of embedded processors such as uh, uh, DSP processor, DAVNCI processor, and uh, OMAP processor, uh, application specific instruction processor. So we can, uh, there are many examples of it. So this is one of the, this is the basic structure of uh, embedded processor. So actually the processor want to communicate with the external world only through the buses. So without buses, we cannot communicate with any device. It may be a memory, it may be an IO device. So here we have these buses. So only through these buses it is going to communicate with external world. So the buses are address bus, data bus, control bus. So the address bus carries address, the data bus carries data, the control bus carries a set of control signals. So the control signals such as either you are going to read operation or write operation, whether you are going to transfer data from processor to memory or memory to processor. So, so these all things are being interfaced with the processor by this VIU, that is bus interface unit. So there are many uh, units, these are all uh, unit function. So the first unit function we are going to discuss about MAR, that is memory address register, which is holding the byte address, which is given by the processor. Next MDO which is holding a byte of data. It may be a byte, it may be a word based upon the size of processor, capability of processor. So this MDR is going to carry a data, it is going to carry a byte of address and SP. So it is a stack pointer. So it is holding the address of its, we call it the address of pointer, which is always present at the top of the memory. So whenever the processor is move on to executing a subroutine program, while well, return back from the subroutine program, it is going to pick up the uh, next ex execution address is from stack mode. So that is what we are using stack mode. And we have the PZ, that is program counter. So it is used to fetch the next instruction to be executed. So it is a pointer actually. So in some of the uh, microprocessor used to say instruction pointer. Uh, most of the commonly uh, processor and controller we used to say PC. Simply we call PC, it is nothing but program counter. And uh, See, so we have many things which is uh, have uh, special items in this embedded uh, processor. So one of this we already know ALU. So ALU is arithmetic logical unit, which is used to execute uh, arithmetic logical operation. Whenever you want to execute the uh, instruction, we are using this ALU operation. It is only used for execution of an uh, instruction. Okay. So then the other unit is FLP. So the some of the things which cannot be done by this ALU. For example, fractional values. So if it is, for example, 5.625 into 6.875, what will be the answer is? So that cannot be done by this A because it is a simple arithmetic logical operation. So that we can execute by using this FLP, that is floating point processing unit. So this floating point processing unit is processing all the kind of complex uh, computation that will be done in this FLP. And uh, AOU, that is Atomic Operation Unit. So this unit is uh, execution of instruction simultaneously or parallelly operating. So we have, there are uh, one instruction we have multiple number of action. So for such case, the AOU is very helpful to divide the instruction into multiple parts and working together and execute at the same time. So that is Atomic Operation Unit. And also, this is used for to avoid a shared data problem because one task it uh, takes, it required, two tasks it required one data. 
So one data is going to share back two tasks. So that time the AOU is very helpful to prevent that sharing of data. For 10 milliseconds, the task one is going to be handled, and remaining five, five milliseconds uh, is going to have, uh, the data is going to be handled by task two. So likewise, the atomic operation is helpful to in sharing of uh, data, in preventing the problems. And uh, we have certain uh, register sets, SRS, ARS, FRS. So this is set register set. ARS is called application register set, and FRS is called floating point register set. So simply register set for uh, it is to store all the register set. It contain instruction and data. So in here instruction data of our system files. Here instruction data of application program. Here instruction data of floating points values. So so for, for system files, uh, in want to execute some system program, they can access this SRS for executing the instruction and data. And here application uh, register set. So whenever you want to run any application, the application instruction and data have been defaultly stored in this block. And FRS. So everywhere, every time you are computing a floating point process. So after executing this floating point uh, uh, operation, the result is defaultly going to store in FRS. That is uh, floating point register set. So whenever the result after computation of this FRP, that is going to store in FRS. And uh, this all comes under the category of advanced processing unit. Okay. So this all unit costs everything on advanced processing unit. So what is advanced processing unit? So this uses a risk processor. The risk processor, you know, risk processor restriction instruction set computer. So that is, it uses a less number of instructions, which is doing a multiple action. And it has less number of addressing modes. And it is operated in real-time operating system. How it is operated in real-time operating system? Because it has PFCU unit. So let me explain what is PFCU unit. So actually the advanced processing unit is used for prefetching the instruction data in advance uh, before the process actually needed. So that is called uh, PFCU. Okay. So the advanced processing unit have multiple options for operating the real-time operating system. So that's why I have done many examples that is uh, DSP processor, or dimension processor, or uh, page specific instruction processor or uh, OIP processor. So these are all comes under this advanced processing unit. Okay. So what speciality contained in this advanced processing unit? So these are all the specialities. So let me go into discuss one by one. First, IQ. What is IQ? IQ is called instruction Q. So actually instructions are waiting a queue for execution. That is called IQ. So actually process is keeps on executing. So before uh, a process going to fetch the instruction from external memory, Instead of that, it already prefetch and it is ready to execute and waiting in a queue that is called instruction queue. Other one is IO that is called instruction register. The current connection is executing and is processing. That is in this block is called IO that is called instruction register. The current instruction is going to be executed. Next is ID that is instruction decoder. The instruction is present in IO that is going to decoder and it is sent to the execution unit. So here CU, this is called control unit. So this unit is controlling whole activity of this process. Okay, so what are the things here? Whether the research to be sent to VAR and the output, VAR, the output is produced everything is controlled by this unit because it is a bus controlling whole bus activity. So and uh, we have this instruction cache, VD cache, data cache. So these are all inside the cap uh, capacity of FPFC. So let's see what is PFC. Prefetch control unit. So this prefetch control unit is going to uh, have a prefetching uh, option. That is, pre prefetch control unit prefetching the instruction data in advance before actually processor needs. Uh, it, it includes the three uh, blocks: that is, instruction cache, BT cache, and data cache. What is instruction cache? Instruction cache are prefetching the instruction in advance, and it is going to execute it. First in first row and VT cache, which is going to prefetch the branch of instruction. The instruction may be like a branch loop or a call subroutines of any kind of loop program. It's a bunch of programs. That bunch of program is going to prefetch and it is readily available in this VT cache. And data cache is 
used to prefetch the data in advance from the external memory. Okay. So why this is all used? Because uh, processor need not to each and every time the go and go to the external memory and fetch the data, then it goes to process. Rather than it will use the readily available cache so that the processing action will be more faster. So that it is advanced processing unit. Okay. And uh, MMU is this memory management unit. It manages the whole memory of this uh, processor. It may be allocating memory for data, it may be allocating memory for instruction. So it allocating memory address for the process, everything. It is managed by memory management unit. And uh, finally, so this all comes under this category of success unit in process. That's it.